Hello everyone, it's Jarrett Moore back with a recap video for this problem of the week number six, which involved Power Query. And this is the screen that you're looking at right now is the solution that you could have that you should have come up with after you had done all the transformation of the data. The actual balance number was at six hundred and eighty-five thousand six hundred and sixteen dollars and thirty-three cents. We had a lot of participation this time around in the challenge, so I appreciate everyone's efforts in trying to get this accomplished. And we even saw a bunch of entries that had the balance that was off by just a little bit, maybe a dollar and five cents or, or a change. And I'll show you as I go through my step-by-step -step entry for this challenge and show you why that dollar amount was off. So without further ado, I'm going to open up Power Query here and we'll look at the data for this and go through step by step on how I came up with my solution. And obviously I know my solution did involve quite a few steps and there were many entries that condensed mine by numerous steps. And I definitely will take those into account for any future endeavors that I have with this type of data. So. Uh, not only did you help solve the problem of the week, but you also helped me out in the long run as well. So all is appreciated. So let's head on over to Power Query here. Here's what the finalized product looks like. Um, but if I head back over here to the original, um, just by clicking on the source right there, you'll see this is what uh, originally showed up when we brought in the data once we connected to the uh, the file location where you wherever you stat, uh, stored that csv file this next step here is just a step that takes place um, once we get things going into power query um, the first thing i did here um, what i want to show you here first before i get into the details as you can see by each one of these uh, steps over here on the right hand side there's a little i for information and that's basically if you put any comments in the actual advanced editor so let me open up the advanced editor real quick here and you can see for each one of these that are in green that i made comments to not only help me with this video but it also helps for any time when you're in Power Query to, to add comments. So if you go back in and say, what was I thinking or what was I doing at that point? At least you have a note to kind of tell yourself what you were thinking at that time and, and it leaves a good uh, trail of, of what you've done in the past. So if somebody new comes in to look at the file, they can at least have some sort of idea of what path you went down. All right, so I'll go ahead and close this right here since we can see the comments on the side here. If I click on this first one, which is change type one, if I highlight this, um, this is the uh, basically the, the changing of the of the types of all of the different columns throughout the top there. And what I put in the information box in here is make sure the current column is set up as decimal, or this is where things will start to go bad. And this brings up the point of why folks come up with that wrong balance amount that I showed you earlier. So what I will do is I have another PBIX file that I copied from somebody who had a uh, one of those entries. So I'll pull that up right now and show you this. So if I pull up this, this is the wrong amount, which was the 685, 615, 28. And there were numerous entries this week that had that amount. So let's figure out how and why that happened. So if we go into transform data, and it's opening up on the other page here for me too. So let me pause this and, and add the, the actual file location. Okay, sorry about that. I had changed the location of the file before I had changed this over. So that's why things weren't working there at the beginning. So I've adjusted the file to, to where we can see all of the data now. And if you go up here to this promoted headers, um, and then we go to change type, what this does right here is if you selected from change type, if you selected from the, the menu here, 
if you select from the top here on the menu, if you if you went to the transform tab, and then at this point, if you clicked on detect data type, which would automatically detect all of these rows, what would happen is current column, you can see right here, comes up as an integer 64, which is not what we want to see, and that's why the amounts change to the to the wrong spot. There's another way that you can have this this show up as well, and that's in settings. So let's let's go on over to settings, and I can show you where if you have this turned on in your settings, you may want to think twice about having this setting turned on. All right, now that I've closed Power Query, let's go File and let's go to Options and Settings. Click on Options. Now this is taking some time to load here. Once we're in the Options menu. This is the uh, the first in the data load menu. It used to be called something different. I'm, I'm losing that offhand what the original name of this was, but in the data load section um, under the global area here, um, this type detection right here. See how I have detect column types and headers for unstructured sources according to each file's settings. If you had this right here selected, always detect column types and headers for unstructured sources that is another reason why you would have gotten that error in that step as well. So one of our enterprise DNA experts who has been a huge help towards me and my knowledge of M code or Power Query language is Melissa. And with Melissa, she showed me a Microsoft document that will help you moving forward to help explain why this error happened. So let's head on over to the web and I've already entered the link for this. Uh, the link for this will also be in the description below. But as we scroll down here on the page, I'm already down here, but the automatic detection of column type and data or in headers, uh, there it is. It used to be called project options. I, I believe this has changed since, uh, I guess Microsoft just needs to update the, the sheet for this, but this right here is that automatically detect column types and headers for unstructured sources is checked. And if we look up here at the top, it only goes based on the first 200 rows of your table. And in my table, the original amount of rows was I think around 4,000 or so rows. So this is why it did not pick up and change some of those wrong amounts there. I'll include that link again in the description below. Let's head back on over to this uh, query, uh, power query for the wrong amount. And you can see right here, whoops, I switched the, if we go to change type and you can see we change it to integer 64 with current. So what I'm gonna do here real quick is filter by one of these invoice numbers to show you what it looks like before and after. So I know one of these invoices is this invoice right here. So if I unselect all, click here, this should filter down just to this invoice number. And you can see that this amount of current is 4,741.01. And then once I click on this change type, you'll see this value change. And now it round or it changed that type to 4,741 even. So that's a quick and, and uh, uh, easy way of explaining what went wrong. So, now let's head on back on over to my solution and we'll go over to Power Query M. And once we've gotten past this step here, um, the next step is where I filtered rows and basically I just filtered um, column one, right, uh, the, the column, this one right here to, to only show the blank rows. Um, next step is where I removed columns. Um, I, I removed all the columns except the ones that, uh, that you see here on the screen. Uh, and actually I put a note in there that record number that originally came up is actually invoice number. So I changed that, uh, the name of that column to invoice number. Next step is I remove blank rows that were null for each field, um, across all the way across there. And then I went over here and I renamed the, I, uh, changed that blank column at the top there. The first column right here was blank before. And I changed that to customer uh, with a little dot on the end, just because coming up here, we're gonna add a, uh, another field and that will be my actual customer field. So then the next step that I did was I, um, I replaced, not replaced, I replaced all the values of 
a blank to null in the customer column. And the reason why you have to do that is because of the next step. In order to, as you see right here, in order to fill down all of these rows, none of this can be null, or none of these can be blank, it has to be null. So once I click on fill down, and all I did to, in order to do fill down is if you right click on this column right here, and you go to fill, and you go fill down, and then that's what I just did right there. And, and that's how, now you see all the names go down across here. So that's, that's definitely, it headed in the right direction. Then I filtered some more rows here in this in, in this instance. Um, I filtered the invoice number uh, to, to remove any kind of blank rows that didn't have a blank or if the invoice number was blank I knew it wasn't a uh, it, it, I knew it wasn't a row uh, that we needed. So then I added another column that's what I want to talk about earlier. Uh, was that customer and basically all I did was just do this column by examples and get rid of the number that was right here which is um, if you want to know that that is the actual like job number that's associated with Tom Brady at the top there so that's why I uh, got rid of this number here and created that new column with just the, the person's name there So then what I did was I just reordered the columns there. I, I basically um, just moved that new customer column from the very end to the very beginning. And then I removed the customer column that had the, the dot or the period on the end of it. So now I just have one clear customer here with no uh, number to the left of it and uh, just did a little bit of reorganizing there. So then what did I did what I did here is uh, it says inserted sum and basically all I did was just take all of the values from current 1 to 30, 31 to 60, 61 to 90, and 91 to 120. I added all of those columns together to get the, the column that's called addition. So that this is how it would, would look if you did a custom column. Or you could also do this as well. So all I did was highlight each one of these columns. You don't have to type that in as a custom column. Just highlight all these columns right here and then head on over to the add column tab and then where it's standard and then you would just hit add and that would give you this field right here which is the addition field and, I, and, and that's what I did in this case here and that added up all of these columns together. So that's a, a nice little trick uh, to, to add that without having to type in anything into Power Query. And then what I did after I had that addition column is I removed all those original columns of current, you know, 1 to 30, 31 to 60, 61 to 90, and 91 to 120. And then what I did was I just renamed that because uh, it's actually the balance due or the balance. So I changed that right there. And then I added a custom column and basically in this challenge, when this original data was uh, taken from the customer, the date was January 21st of this year. So all I did was just add a custom column. If I double click here, just today's date, add the dates with quotation marks and you got your date in there. So that was today's date. And then it automatically come up as a as a as a text function so I changed it to a date in this step right here and then what I did was I created a uh, an age column which basically all I did was take if you, if you highlight today's date first and then due date and then you go over to add column and you hit age it's not working in this case but if, if you hit age then it will or not age sorry if you subtract days it will give you um, you don't want to subtract date or you don't want to hit age in this case um, but you'd want to hit subtract days in order to get that um, correct number um, for the the age and it come back again as text so what I did in this step is I just changed that to a whole number and then what I did here was just change age to age or to days aged. And then had two more conditional columns that I needed to add is because once I had the dazed age, then I had to come back up with the um, original uh, 
conditional column here for aging, which was that current uh, 1 to 30, 31 to 60, 61 to 90, and then greater than 90 is what this client used. So I didn't use the uh, the greater than um, uh, greater greater than 90 was the last column. So I, I added this um, conditional column here, and all I did was just take one of those days aged. Um, if it was less than um, zero or equal to zero, that would fall in the current status. In this example, we didn't have any invoices that were current, but, uh, and this is just the numbering, um, or, or the this is the aging column that I come up with to, to, to recategorize, recategorize uh, those, those items there. Then the last step here is I just created another conditional column to help sort that aging column so they would show in, sequ in sequential order the way that I wanted to show up. Now I know I spent a little bit more time than I wanted to today, but I hope you enjoyed this challenge here. And that's how I come up with uh, my totals. So if I hit close and apply here, not that we did anything different, I'll change this, minimize this, minimize that. Once again, this is our solution for this, for this uh, problem of the week. I hope you enjoyed. Until next time, thank you. Hey everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the contents covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best, take care.